Welcome to Higher Praise. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your anointing. For allowing us to enter in where few go. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit and that thick anointing that's in, that's in the atmosphere. Father, I ask God that healing should go from chair to chair and heart to heart. Father, I pray, God, that you would unlock those who are bound and bind up the enemy today. God, we repent of our sins. We repent of um, anything that's not of you that would stop us from clearly hearing the word of God. Father, we uh, pray for our leaders and our military, our teachers and our children. Father, we uh, pray for those that are ill and those that are hurt. We pray, Jesus, for those who have um, buried loved ones this past week. We pray. And Father, as they lay the police officer in Richmond to rest at, um, tomorrow, God, we ask, Father, that you would bring healing and comfort to Richmond and the surrounding areas. Father, I know that you have given us a destiny yeah. and a purpose. Yeah. That's true. A mighty purpose. Yeah. Devil, I ask you to back up off of souls right now in the name of Jesus. Back up off of souls. Loose your grip. Darkness, you must loose your grip because the light commands you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Someone right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, God says the... Um, guilt and shame of your past is falling off amen someone has felt awkward and uncomfortable for a while like you're not comfortable in your own skin but god wants to say that's the guilt and the shame of your past and he's peeling it off of you right now thank you jesus in the name of jesus amen god has told me right now i believe by the power of the holy spirit he says what god has delivered you out of Quit running back to. Oh, I don't know who that's for. What God has separated you from, what God has removed out of your life that was such a burden and such a weight, do not run back to it because it's familiar. Let your deliverance be whole right now in the name of Jesus. Someone right now says, Lord, I don't even know why I'm up in this place. You know, I was sinning last week. Take that guilt and that shame off of you. The blood of Jesus Christ washes away your sins. God wants to greet you with grace and mercy. I don't know who I'm talking about today. But God wants to greet you with grace and mercy in the spirit today. Grace and mercy. He says he loves you through your sickness, through your pain, through your ugly, and through your regret. He loves you. Too much to leave you in it. Amen, amen, amen. I speak deliverance over the body today. Mm, deliverance over the body today. Amen. If any of that's for you, just kind of wave your hand, trouble your hand in the atmosphere, and say, God, come see about me. God, come see about me. Thank you, Jesus. God, come see about me. Father, we want to thank you, God, for your word and your spirit in the house, Father. Your word and the spirit in the house, Father. Mm, this is the first, God tells me to tell you, this is the first day of many of encounters. The first day of many encounters. God, we're humbled and we ask you, God, that your Holy Spirit would just move upon our hearts, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. Amen. The Bible says if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are a saint of God. Amen. You are a saint of God. Praise God. Could you get that light for me, guy? Is a, is a um, saint of God. Woo, I can see y'all now. Look at y'all. Y'all beautiful. Amen. Y'all beautiful. I got a, uh, uh, these are a couple of uh, quick pastoral announcements here. 
um, men's night is going to be this Monday, and it's going to be it's it's this it's this Monday. She just tell me she stole my water. She see she got a bottle by her chair this big, but she steals my see her see, that's married right there. That's married. Anyway, um, that um, men's night's going to be at the uh, Mexican restaurant on Fifth. At seven o'clock, Amen. Look, look, look. He all, he he liked the burrito. Oh yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Uh, at, at seven o'clock this this Monday, men, please come out. Um, they reserved a back room for us, so we can have biblical discussions while you uh, while you're eating and slopping up some salsa or whatever it is that you that you um, that you do. So um, let your uh, friends know, let the men know that you can come out and we do a little study there. And before I leave kids for Children's Church, um, kindergarten and first will be downstairs today in this back room. So remember, kindergarten and first, you'll be, you'll be down here. So we'll go ahead and release kids for Children's Church at this time. Release kids for Children's Church at this time. Amen. So while they're doing that, do we have any visitors for the first time in this side? I just want to wave at you. Don't want to hurt anybody. Anybody, any new visitors in this section? Look, she said, any new visitors in this section? Any new visitors in this section? All right, any new visitors back on the back walls? I'm going to wave at you. Hey, wave at you, yeah. Hey, man, any new visitors over here? Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you. And I know all y'all over there. Hey, Amen. Praise God. We're so glad that you guys were able to be here with us. We don't take it lightly. Uh, you could be any place, but you decide to come and worship with us, and we really, really enjoy that. And after church at 3 o'clock, we'll be next Sunday. next Sunday. After church next Sunday. <laughs> Where y'all left me? Next Sunday, they're going to do the demonstration about making the water purification system, right? Yes. Is that what? Yeah, so it's like a three-bucket buck, system. I tell you, you take river water, you pour it in top. By the time it gets to the bottom, it's clear. Drinking water. So it's something that you need in case you have any problems or have our, our water shut up or anything like that, which is a lot of stuff going on, which, you don't, which, um, which I talked about on Wednesday night. I gave an update on Wednesday night uh, about certain things that's happening in Israel and certain things that are um, happening in our world and our economy. Amen. And one thing you, you had, a, um, they, um, you might see this on TV, uh, uh, Slash Purge or whatever like this. Anybody has ever seen those movies, it's where they let crime run rampant for 24 hours and they don't prosecute it. It's a movie set. It's like a horror movie kind of set thing. Well, one police officer said now they've told that they give cashless bails to up to first degree murders and they'll release you. And... Um, and even if you violate a restraint order, any of those serious things now, you will come through and you'll go out. And, and that the police won't get you. They had a, a thing on TV uh, that I watched where a man was leaving, working out and going across the street. And um, three guys came up in a car and robbed him and hijacked him. And he, got one, he hit one in the face. And, and got away, and it was a nice car, and the police was going to put chase, but the commander called it off. He says, just leave him alone, and they robbed 19 people that week at, gun, at, at gun, gunpoint. And pretty soon, you, in these, several of these counties, you can actually threaten someone or actually shoot someone in the leg or something like that, and they'll get you, but then they'll release you and that you can come back. So we're getting to that point, the Bible says in last days, lawlessness yeah. Yeah. will abound. Yeah. You might say lawlessness, not only lawlessness, but we have turned on police officers where they're having a hard time getting police officers because we want to defund the police. We want to do, um, in California, there's several police departments that are 500 police officers short. 500 police officers short. We're short here. And we're there, they're short because really good men and women don't want to take that abuse for doing what they're supposed to be doing. So 
we have to not mistake it for the time that that we're in. And like I promised you um, this week, I do the third and final installment of uh, what I've been preaching, rejecting the false, embracing the truth. Amen. There's been some videos, thanks to um, Jeff and Guy, um, that's been loaded up to our um, YouTube page. So you can check out some of our um, older ones there as they um, begin to load, load them back up onto our account. Um, we have to learn how rejecting the false, embracing the, the truth, what that means. I heard someone say, he's very intellectual. I heard someone say it about this. He was talking about the Russia and, um, you know, and, and the, um, he doesn't call it a war. I forget what, what he calls it, but the, U, the Ukraine conflict, but it's, it's a war. And the guy said, I don't know what we think, how, how we think Russia's not going to win this. He goes, Russia's going to win it. He goes, make no mistake. He goes, they're going to they're gonna win it. And he said one, one thing that was important that I think it crosses over into uh, biblical things. And he was talking about, you'll see it in Europe. He'll flex his muscle in Europe. He'll just turn off the oil. He goes, and it'll be a tough winner for all your, your Europeans. And he says, you cannot defeat someone you can't say no to. It's impossible to defeat someone you can't say no to. Because you can't say, no, we don't want to have anything to do with you because he is so entangled in the European economy that you just can't say no to him. And I thought about, oh my God, that's why there's not more deliverance in the church. Because you cannot defeat a devil you won't say no to. You can't. See, when you're in and out doing your, your mess and then coming to the altar for deliverance, and we say, why, doesn't, why do some people get delivered and some people don't? Because you cannot get, get delivered from what you won't say no to. Ask an alcoholic who is actively alcoholic, unless he says no to the drink, he cannot be a former alcoholic. And if you can't say no to certain things, you can't have victory over those things. So when I counsel with people, I'll, I'll, I'll tell people, I say, you got to leave that alone. You got to stop, whatever. And I said, it is detrimental to your deliverance for you to say no to something because you can't say yes to Jesus and yes to his faith and yes to his walk if your no has no power. I mean, everyone knows the person you say when they say no, no. I said, you can't sway. You can't change your mind. You need to be that way about your faith. Amen. How many times have you been disappointed when you see pre preachers who are elevated or famous preachers and then they get on CNN or something like that and they kind of like wishy-washy about the questions? Yeah. Don't that just break your heart? Yeah. When they ask them a direct question, a biblical question, then they go, well, you know, everyone got, you know, what I'm like, no, they didn't ask everyone. They're asking you. They're asking you. I've seen some people with a, um, one um, disgraced pastor that was from Hillsong out of um, New York, who, you know, who they asked about, you know, two or three years ago. He was on the uh, old clip. He was on Oprah and Oprah was asking, you know, and asking point blank, is there only one way to God? It was an easy question. She threw him a softball question. <laughs> softball question. Christianity 101. There's one God in Jesus is the Messiah and the doorway. No man comes to the Father except through him. And he calls, now, if you call yourself a Christian, that's what you believe. If you don't believe that, you're not a Christian, you're something else. Now, if she would have asked a Muslim, he would have said Allah. If he, if he would have asked a, a Jew, they would have said, you know, we're waiting for the Messiah. But they asked a, a, a Christian, a softball question. He goes, well, you know, there's many ways. Like a spoke on a wheel. If there are so many ways, why did Jesus die? I would say, keep me off the cross, pick another way. Why did Jesus die if there was many ways? That was a waste, that was a waste of a good man. That was a waste of, said there was no sin in him. So he became sin for us. 
If there was another way, basically he would have stayed up in heaven and says, y'all get here the best way y'all can. Why did he die if there was all these many, many ways? Listen, the guy lied on TV. He forsook his calling and his thing. That's why he doesn't have that platform anymore. God has a way of saying, okay, next. Okay, move aside. Listen, I don't even feel bad about talking about it because I'm talking about the enemy. And I'm not lobbying rocks anybody. I'm just telling you the truth. All right. All right. I saw the thing. I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, there was such an opportunity. Yeah. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't be open minded. Be spiritual minded, which is better than open minded. Yeah. Spiritual minded means I love you. Right where you are, but love you too much to lie to you, keep you where you are. Open minded. This was open minded means. Go ahead and lie, lie to me. I'll listen. That's what open minded means. It means, OK, you can line up five, five people. Say, I, I'm, I'm open. And you may know two of those to be a liar, but you're so open minded. You're going to listen to the lie. OK, I'm going to be open minded here. So I'll go ahead and listen. You might say that's stupid, but you didn't you didn't let someone feed something into your soul on underneath the guise of I just want to be open minded. Yeah. Know what the Bible that says that it says be spiritually minded and spiritually led. Mm. Amen. God did not die so we can be a sea, a sea of fools. Amen. He died to leave us with power and authority in our hands. Look, look, um, let me um, take you to Romans 1, 16. You guys probably know this, Romans 1, 16. Um, go down, uh, I'm going to do 16 and 17. And it says, for I am not what? Ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed See, when you're not ashamed and you're focusing on Jesus Christ, revelation follows. Oh, OK, y'all will get this in a minute. For in the righteousness of God is revealed. Revelation is revealed from faith to faith. As is it written, the just shall live by faith. If you're living by faith, you're walking and living in revelation. Revelation of who God is and who this world really is. When you're saying, I don't get it, I'm blinded because you're in that veil to, to get the revelation. You have to be a, a um, son or daughter of, of Christ. You might say, for example, no one knows what happens in your family except that family. Why do you know what happens in that family? Because if you're part of the family, you have an inside look at what the family does. Look, I don't know what your family customs are because I'm not sitting at the table. But I know what God's customs are because he makes room for us at the table. Amen. No more are we alienated. We are family. We are we are grafted in. We are we are part. So we have the revelation of what God is doing. Listen, if you don't know anything about Jesus, you think the world's, you know, just, you know, you don't really know what's going on. And it, 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 it freaks me out when people want more of the same. It's terrible. It's terrible. But. People say, you know, gas prices is terrible, four dollars, five dollars. But given the chance, some people given the chance, they would vote for higher gas prices. Because you think it's in. For example, we know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you because it says the world is foolishness compared to the wise. For, for example, is we're, you know, pushing everybody to electric cars, right? Everybody going to go to electric cars, everybody going to go to electric cars. Till they did the math, there's not enough lithium on the earth to replace all gas cars with electric cars. There's not enough lithium on the earth. You can't mine enough. Elon Musk, who is the head of Tesla, says you, the economy in the world, cannot survive without fossil fuels. And this, this, you know, this ain't this is just the fact, this one, I'm gonna show you something. He just says it's, an, it's, it's impossible. Because he can do the math. Not only is it impossible, but now they're having rolling blackouts and there's not, it hasn't even taken effect yet, but the government in California says you cannot, you cannot charge your electric car in the middle of the day because rolling blackouts. They said that. For one, they, they announced it. They announced by 2030, 
it'll be illegal in California to sell new gas powered cars or motorcycles or lawnmowers. It's a, it'll be illegal in California. The next week they said, but you can't charge them. And given any given time, the masses will still vote for idiocracy. We'll still vote for that stupidness. They will. They, I, I promise you, they will still vote for that. Now, now you might say, Pastor, what's that to do with anything? Because it's the same kind of mentality that said crucify him. Yeah, that's true. Everybody in the crowd wanted to get delivered. But they said crucify the Messiah and let 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 the murderer go. We are still those people. We are still those people. That's why you cannot get from here to there without Jesus, because you need to have a revelation. Those people do not have a revelation. You can even sit down and talk to people and point. This is what causes this. This is what causes that. And they'll say, well, my family's always been that way. And they will still vote for sin. Yeah, it's true. It's true. They will still vote for sin because wickedness is in each and every one of us apart from Christ. Amen. I just want to give a normal analogy. There's there's a, a, a lot more. Just like when you get people on TV who maybe be a middle to low income. And they'll say we want to defund the police, right? When you defund the police, who do you think is going to hurt? The middle to low income. The, the police respond to the rich neighborhoods before they go to the battleground. But it's you're saying, but none of those people who say defund the police can afford private security. But the politicians who are saying defund the police, they got their own security. And they live in gated communities. But how do they get the power? Because people still, <laughs> still put foolishness in over righteous thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And then they go, just like happening now, murder is on the rise. <laughs> they're coming in stores and they're raiding the stores. Now what the big kick is, now they follow you to the good neighborhood to rip you off. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God. And then you sit back and go, Stupid is as stupid does. But one thing God says, you cannot be delivered if you cannot say no to what you want to be delivered from. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. And the thing about it is, is that we are not ashamed of the gospel. See, there's a, there's a, 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 a Bema seat. That we all come in front of. It's a, it's, it's a judgment seat. Yeah. Bema seat it, 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 the Bema is, is what um, the Romans would use that you stand upon and people would come from. And that's the word they use is, is Bema is where they would come and they would get judged. And, and the thing about getting judged in, in front of that, when you come before God, you cannot point to everyone else's problems. God is going to delve and he'll just look at you and you'll know and he'll look inside you. And it's not so much our actions, but it's our intents behind those actions. Why do we do what we do? Amen. And a lot of times everyone is here has been self-serving at some time because none of y'all came out your mama's womb righteous. Amen. You know, we all have been sinners. We've all come by this way. So we all know the tricks and the trades and the manipulation. Yep. And it always uh, boggles my mind when people try to manipulate God. I'm like, that ain't going to work right there. That ain't going to work. You know, you guys have done it. You know, manipulate God. God, if you just let me live through this hangover. Uh, Lord. And you figure, what, what, what can you get? Lord, I preach your word. <laughs> Forget about being called. Like, I preach your, your word. They call you up next Saturday. Dude, you going out? You know it. <laughs> you know it, man. And in your mind, you go, now I know not to mix those two. I should be all right. <laughs> and you go, and you, but he said, but dude, I thought you made a, made a promise to God. Oh, he understands. He understands you a liar. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. 
You know, we've all, we've all been there. You know, Lord, please don't let this cop pull me over. I'll slow down from now on. Lord, I slow down from now. Whew, he went by. He went by. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Y'all lie. Lie. Trying to manipulate to get in on some anointing. But God, but God loves us so much, he knows, he, he, he knows our lack, but he, that's why he filled in the gap with Jesus for us. Because none of us would be able to stand without the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, verse 38. Just like it says in the last verse, it says 38 says, now the just shall live by faith. What, and let me stop. What does that mean to you? Living by faith. Yeah, coming to church, but it's more than that. Living by faith. Uh, you know, everybody can come into the sanctuary and come into church, but, there, but it's a church inside of you. Is that peace of God inside of you? And do you live by your faith? What that means is, is it a big part of your life? If it's not a big part of your life, make it a part of your life. Amen. You know, um, some of y'all, I mean, you know, y'all pray before you go to the hospital, but some of y'all need to pray before you go to Walmart. Amen. You know, you know, some of y'all, 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 y'all remember this. This is the most prayer, prayer situation in the world. You know, when you're teaching your kid how to drive, parents are like, oh, thank you, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, wait, 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 break, break. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. And the kids get mad at you. You make me nervous. Oh, you scaring the heck out of me. I'll trade you any day for nervous to be scared. Amen. So, you know, we, we do that. So we have to live by faith. What that, what that means is you have to have a desire to be a better you. But the new, but new phrase is, take me or leave me. <laughs> what you see is what you get. And I'm like, you don't want to be better? People are like, I want to love, I want to love all my flaws. That's all it is, is a flaw. Yeah. But don't you want to get better? Yeah. Don't you want to get healed? And the thing about it is, every day I get up, I want to be a better me. Every time I go to bed, I'm like, yeah, I take a mental inventory and I pray and I say, I need to be better the next day. So when I, when I go to bed that night, I kind of know a couple things I need to say no to. You know, spiritually. And bacon ain't one of those, but, you know, <laughs> for all you were saying, for all you haters out there. But anyway, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Remember, when you live by faith, whatever, and all of a sudden you draw back in your faith so other people aren't uncomfortable because you're a Christian? You think you're helping somebody by making yourself lesser? I don't care if it's in a Christian situation or anything else. You never give glory to God by shrinking. And you never benefit yourself by getting smaller. Amen? My soul has no pleasure in them, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but to those who believe to the saving of the soul. Now, perdition is, it's, it's a final, irrevocable spiritual ruin. Or if you say that someone is on the road to perdition, you mean that their behavior is likely to lead them to failure and punishment. Looking, looking straight ahead in case those people are with you, you know someone. <laughs> Who on a road to perdition. You know somebody who is going to hit a speed bump and, and you know you say, Lord, Lord Jesus, she's just by five days from getting to a reckoning. <laughs> or you just like, you know what? Uh, they about, you know, they about to learn today. <laughs> you know, you say, when you see somebody, oh, they're they, they, they going to get caught. They're about to learn today, boy. About to learn today. See, you got to understand that, um, that you make sure that's not you. That your behavior is not going to lead you to punishment. And I'm talking spiritually. We know that evidently um, robbing people don't lead to punishment anymore. Amen. They can go to Walmart, take what they want. Some of them even announce it. So, look, I'm taking this and tell people to move out the way and let people film them. 
Look at all YouTube. People film it. Like, I can't believe they're stealing that. Oh, look, John. Look, look, look. He done took the last PlayStation. Ain't that what you wanted? He done took, he done took it off the shelf. Didn't pay a daggone thing. And then she looked, don't get no ideas now. And walk out the store. And then everybody with the Walmart bags looking at them go, mm, that's a shame. Just ratchet. Just, that's just a shame. But ain't nobody stopping it. See, listen, it has now happened physically what's been happening spiritually. You just didn't see it. But now, see, what's in you comes out. So now the society, the, as you know, you see the society is terrible. People robbing. It's always been that way. Spiritually. But now it's manifesting itself. Naturally. So now all the shop livers don't have to be discreet. All the people who are shooting people don't, don't, don't even have to speed away. They, they, they shoot you and then stroll. Right? Because it's becoming more and more acceptable. And not only, some of you are filming the people stealing, not because you think it's bad, because you want to go to their page because you know they're selling it later. Have you figured out when you go to eBay and this brand new TV's half price, hey, they didn't get those the way you think they got them. That's what people steal. They steal and they set up eBay stores. And they sell their stuff. But that's what's been happening spiritually. We've been, we've been robbed spiritually. We've been wrecked spiritually. And all the droughts, there's been a spiritual drought starting from the sins of the West and all the things that they do. Are you surprised that they, and it's so crazy that we advertise it now and it draws people. Come to Sin City. Where you going? <laughs> what happens there stays there. The devil is a lie. Y- y'all on social media. Y'all on social media. All those babies by the mother women, they're going to call you soon. It's too late. You done gave them your genetic material. You on 20, 23 and me. That kid going to find you. You you think, what happens in Vegas? Stay in Vegas. Why? Because that's Sin City. So you go, they say, you know, whatever now. So you, you tell your friends, we go to Vegas and wink. So what you're saying is don't say nothing. You get back, don't say what happened. And we promote that, and that's big. And, and I don't even have to say the name, Vegas. If I say Sin City, everybody would, would sit there and tell me what I'm talking about. And they're so proud of it that they advertise it. Don't you think that has a spiritual hardship going on? Not only do we do that, even if your city's not Sin City, we carve out something. And the police officers know it. This is the red light district. That's the sin part of town. This is red light. And and every every town, every city has them. That's where most of the cracks sold. That's where most of the the um, uh, women of the night are, you know, so we, we, we carve that, and, and we know, and we don't even take our kids, like, don't go to that, that's the red light, just, and we didn't, you know, we show everybody, you know, we, we know all about it. Since when, when you give the devil a foothold, he does not stay in his boundaries. You think you're doing good, say, well, you know, this is the red light, this is, this is the poor, this, this is the red light, we're going to keep him there. No, 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 the devil never stays where you think you put him. You think you departmentalized your sin and you think he's going to stay there. (laughs) Sweet Jesus, that's like thinking a snake bites venom stays where he bit. It goes through your whole body. Shut your lungs down, your kidneys, your heart. Because it just doesn't stay if it bit you on the hand. It doesn't stay on your hand. It goes through your body. Sin, when it bites, doesn't stay where it bit. It infects. Hope, hope y'all seeing what I'm, what I'm talking about. Because today, it can be your deliverance. It doesn't have to be that way. You do not have to manage sin. You can kick sin out. You don't have to manage the devil. You can tell him to get out. The devil doesn't want you to know that you got power and authority. He doesn't want you to know that. Because if you knew that, he would be affecting us less. It's the same thing with Pastor Whereby, like, Lord Jesus, Beelzebub, get behind me. 
because the devil wants to rush. The devil wants to get in, get into your to your mind and your brain so that you don't sit there and, and do what God says. Do listen. I know rent is high in California and L.A. Rent is high in New York, but it's cheap in your brain. You are letting the enemy and the devil live rent free in your brain. Every time you're being buffeted and you're being whatever. That's why when you kick them out, the devil goes, get seven more friends, take them out. I know a place that's cheap to rent. And comes and brings seven other demons back worse than he was to move back in because you have not got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you right now, I would want the Holy Spirit to live and saturate me so there's no room for anything other than the things of God. You got me? So listen, quit being the cheap renter. Amen. Some of you came in here with your mind already messed up because you have an abuser living rent free in your head. What they said about you on Facebook is rent free in your head. What someone lied and have a conversation with somebody else and you think about it lives rent free in your head. I told someone just today, I said, I, the best thing I can tell you is it's too late. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because you got to understand. After um, Johnny Smith has passed away. It's too late to worry about if he was saved or not. That's right. That's right. You got to move on. It's too late. People say, "Well, oh, I, you know, I hope they were saved. I hoped he, hope he or she knew Jesus." It's too late to hope that. Was you hope? Was you hoping enough to represent why they were alive? It's too, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not among those ones that believe you can pray people out of purgatory because I can't find it in Scripture. Amen. Some decisions are final. Yeah. Yeah. Are final. Take it. I've done so many funerals that I don't even count no more. And I, I keep all the ones that I do. I got a big box of all the ones that I've done, and it's like this deep. And I, and I, I talk about about Christ, you know, and it's always a joy when you do the funeral of someone who, who loves the Lord, whatever like this. But what you don't understand is if it's you, the torment that is left on your family when they don't know if you're in heaven or not. I know we live selfishly. But if you happen to go, let your family know that, you know, I know he or she loved Jesus. I know God is taking care of them. I know they're not su suffering anymore. I've been at funerals where people are like, it's a toss up. <laughs> They'd be honest. Some people are like, it's a toss up. Or, 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 or some people are like, oh, that's such a shame. He says, I feel for the family. I said, oh, yeah, we feel for the family too. He said, because he's splitting hell wide open right now. I'm like, hey. He goes, I ain't worried about it. They all know he in hell. I'm like, okay. I'm preaching about Jesus this morning. That's what I'm preaching on. You know, had one sit down. I said, yeah, I haven't seen her in a while. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, she, she's passed. God bless her. So someone leaned over and said, she was an evil woman. <laughs> I'm like, what? She was just so evil. I know somebody, and, and, I, and, and it was her sister. <laughs> and, you know, you know, it don't, it don't happen often, but I was put on mute. I was like. And I'm like, I'm like, y'all didn't say that. It was true. They know. Had an attitude for the day is long. I'm like, okay. So I'm just saying, you have to reject the false to embrace the truth. You can't do both. You can't embrace the truth while you're holding hand with the devil. Because the truth will leave you. See, the truth doesn't share or, or the truth doesn't go half and half with the enemy. Either you all in or you all out. And people say, I'm not choosing. Oh, you're not diplomatic. You're just a coward. And no choice is a choice. 
Because you have to say, you have to choose Christ. If you don't choose Christ, you are in your sins. You are, you're dead work to your sins. Am I, am I here trying to scare you? No, but if it scares you, you've got a problem. If it scares you, you've got a problem. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter, the uh, second chapter, verse 20. 2 Peter, second chapter, verse 20. It says this. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome them. Now, I, I, I want you to see where it calls it pollution and the knowledge of this world. Because why they call it pollution? Because it pollutes you. It corrupts you. OK. And again, entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit. And a sow, ha a sow having washed in her wallowing in the mire. See, listen, you got to understand that's how God views it. It's better for you to not have known than to have known. For he says there's a deeper punishment because it's almost like you're part, you're, you're, you're demonic. Because let, let me tell you, uh, demons which are fallen angels, right? And there's no redemption for demons because they were, they were there and saw God create. They knew his power. They knew his might. Absolutely. And they, and they chose to um, go. You become like one of them where it's better that you knew and now you with knowledge rejected. And your redemption leaves because that's why there's no redemption. I, I came to a guy. He says, you know what? He goes, I love Jesus so much. He goes, I he goes, I pray for the devil. Talking about Walmart guy talked to me. I'm like, what? He goes, no, just hear me. I pray for him. Whatever. And I'm like, I ain't gonna matter. And he says, why? I said, the devil doesn't want your prayers. I said, you're assuming he wants to be reinstated. You're assuming he wants forgiven. He doesn't. He wants to be God. Yeah, that's right. He looked at me. He's like, oh, well, I didn't know. That. I said, so you're assuming that the false prophet wants to be a true prophet. He doesn't. Because there's a there's a cutoff because you're assuming that the author of all lies and deceit now wants to be the author of truth. He doesn't. He doesn't. So you can pray for the devil all you want. That means he's just keeping you busy for praying for those who are in need. And I said, devil's not like us. I said, he has absolute knowledge. The devil has, has no misguidings about what he did. He knows exactly what he did. You have never made a decision with absolute knowledge. You never have. But he did because he was there. And do not let the world, because it says the devil is a prince of this world. Talk about the way, it, way it's ran. Do not let that pollute you to the point that you back up or backside or go back on what you know to be true. That's why I say it's better for you because there's a certain kind of torment from those who have known and went back because you're not comfortable on the bar because you know too much. You're, you're kind of not comfortable on the back pew of church because you know what you're not doing. So you're in this limbo in between where you're tormented. Do I go back and, and go in the world and do everything I want to do? But you but the little bit of Holy Spirit that's holding on to you is just biting at you and say no. And you feel dirty. You feel terrible. But then you want to go to church because you're in church. But you say, but I don't want to come all the way because I feel so much shame. So then you sit home and trying to figure out if you're going to go to heaven or hell. Or not. You're like, well, I'm 51 percent good. How many people know that Jesus don't save on a percentage? He doesn't save on a percentage. I don't care if you 75 percent good that that that, that 25 will send you to hell. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Jesus is the only one that saves totally. The blood of Jesus Christ redeems us totally. Yeah. It's like this. Everybody goes, you go, you get your picture taken, and everything you go and you get your passport. Right. Your passport lets you know that you're an American citizen and when you got to go up to go to other different countries, whatever. So you got your passport. Your passport gives you access to the rest of the world. Yeah. But for some reason, you've been lied to. So you throw your passport away 
and then you are bewildered because you can't go nowhere. That's what we do in the spirit. Jesus is our passport, our access to heaven. He's our access to heaven. Someone lied to you, you throw Jesus away, and then you wonder why, and then you wonder why earth is the only place you can be. Well, I'm going to go to heaven. They ain't going to let me in. Why ain't they going to let me in? Do you got Jesus as a passport? No. They told me I threw that away. Why would you throw it away when it, when it lets you know? That's why Jesus says, get ye, be, get ye away from me, do of iniquity. I know you not. Means you're not, you don't, see, a passport lets the person who let you in know who you are. So you have no passport. Jesus says, I can't uh, uh, affirm who you are. Your name's not written in blood, whatever. All I see is that you have thrown it away. So move aside and let the saints in. Yeah. Move aside and let the saints in. All right. All right. See, listen, you got to understand, no one else's sin is going to stop you from getting into glory. Right. Only yours. Do not say, well, I'm going to miss heaven because of you. No, it ain't because it's going to be because of you. Right. Amen. Amen. Your husband may split hell wide open, but you ain't got to. Your wife may lead 20 to hell, but it doesn't have to be you. Your kids who you raise knowing Jesus Christ, but all of a sudden decide they want to work for the devil is not going to to um, dictate if you get in or not. You got to understand you go on your own merit. That's why we call him. He's our personal Lord and Savior. Listen, personal does not mean secret. Amen. People say, well, my, I don't want to talk about it. my relationship with Jesus Christ is personal. Okay, and? Oh, so you try to say your personal relationship with your wife, that's secret? You better tell people you're married. If not, she going to. Oh, girl, he married. See? Why don't you smack him back here? Why don't you tell her you was married? Because it's personal. Y'all would not be married long, I'm telling you. <laughs> Keeping your relationship secret is not good. Keep relationship with Christ secret is not good. Be proud of where you are. Be proud of who you marry. Be proud of where you are. Amen? Amen. It's fine. It really is. It's, it, it, it's your life as long as you're doing stuff right. I mean, now, so for some of you who write letters to serial killers, ask them to marry you when you're in jail, y'all got issues. Y'all got issues. Did you know that was a thing? Yeah. They get fan mail. Yeah. Don't you know if they let him out, you next? <laughs> Woman, how you figure that out? You next. Sooner he gonna kill you next. Oh, I just love him. He's so dark. He's so silly. <laughs> like messing with knives and everything. Girl, you next. You be at his, you be at his parole hearing. Thank you, know him. Oh, I, oh, I seen your movie. On Netflix, yes, yeah, they got it all wrong. <laughs> Talking about you decapitated somebody. They don't know. He's like, girl, I did that. <laughs> I did that. We have to just stop playing with sin. Because it will kill you. Sin will kill you. And stroll away from you and looking for the next victim. Sin, listen. Sin don't come to your funeral and see about you after it's done killed you. Sin done moved on. Sin is, I, I, I tell you what. Sin is the real COVID. Sin is a real pandemic. And, and any little bear is not going to stop it from coming. You can't get a shot and take sin away. Sin is so contagious you can give to other people. Isn't it funny how everybody drives to church by themselves, but when they go to a party, the, the car's full? Just one of those things that make you go, hmm. You will take your friends to hell, but won't take them to church. I don't understand that. And don't say, well, they ain't going to come. You ain't even asked none of them. Now that's why they think you're too good for them, because you ain't invited them. Well, I just can't go there like that. He think he's too, too good. Why were they saying that? You think you're too good. Not because you won't do what you want to do. It's because you just haven't extended the invitation. Because maybe in a minute you think you might be a little bit. So it's good to send that an invitation so that we know that there are people getting saved in the camp. 
And I'm going to stop there because I know y'all, I got my um, point across. I had one more, but I'm going to get my point across here. I don't want y'all to start talking about me. Amen, because they were talking about me at the door because my wife parked so close to my truck. Okay. I can see it. She's real close to my truck. Yeah, I know. I know. Kim, ain't nobody asking you for your opinion. I know. I know. No, I know. It's, it's uh, you know, but we are, we are together. Don't, don't worry about the woman behind the curtain. <laughs> They talk about my truck driving skills. But I had to make sure my daddy had enough room to get out. You know how that is. <laughs> Boy, haters in the church. This baby haters. Haters in the church. But I just <laughs> But I just trying to tell everybody that God has a number waiting for you. Amen. But can you have the courage to say no to your sin? And make it right. You know, there might be somebody who, you know, for no reason, you just don't like them. The Bible says that is sin when you have a um, lot against your brother for no reason. What do you mean, Pastor? You know, those people come up and be like, you know, okay, women, listen, mm, I don't really care, care for her. Why? I don't know, something about it. See, that's having a lot against your brother for no reason. You can't do that. It, you know, they didn't smack you in the mouth. They didn't, you know, cut you on private. You just say, oh, I get a vibe. No, no, no. You can't do that. Because for every person that gives you a vibe, you give somebody a vibe too. You give somebody a vibe. You're like, why wouldn't they like me? I'm so nice. Why wouldn't they like me? And they're thinking the same thing when you don't like them. Why don't they like me? I'm nice. You know? So we have to get back to loving, to caring, to doing the things that God says do. Because I tell you right now, when God keeps sending people, he's going to send someone who rubs you the wrong way. But are you still in church? I have people who leave church because someone um, came to 25 years ago. They don't like, well, I just can't go there unless you're going to kick him out. <laughs> oh, now it's my battle. No, listen, I ain't kicking you out unless you're threatening people in the church or you're a threat on the church. Yeah. But if you don't like him, you ought to be celebrating because they need Jesus. Amen. Oh, I can't stand him. He needs Jesus. So when he comes up to your church and gets saved because you say he needs Jesus, wonder if God acted upon all the people you dislike and say they need Jesus and then they come to your church. <laughs> Talking about, oh, I'm going to get saved. And you'd be like, Pastor, we need to talk. You know that guy that came on? He's a low-down, dirty scoundrel. I said, I know he got saved. Oh, you don't know, no. no. Well, I pray with him. He said he had a past. I said he wanted to give his life to Christ. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. But today I'm Jesus, and I'm not saying okay. I'm not okay. I'm not okay because today I'm Jesus. I don't want them in there. And he said, well, he, and he, he goes, Pastor, look, look, he came back. He did? Yeah, there he is. Hey, brother, don't be nice to him. You know what? I've been here for 10 years. He comes twice, and you're loyal to him. I ain't loyal to anyone of you. I'm loyal to Jesus. If they want to come, they want to repent, because y'all don't know. When you came to Jesus, several people were watching you talk about they doing where? They're in where? Mm, girl. Your church gonna fall in. No, we got we got some we got some um, steel beams. It's okay. They thought that about you when you came through the church. Door. Ooh, girl, look at him. Look at him. He know he got three girlfriends at the same time. Look at him. Amen. Amen. He got he got so many girls. He ought to be a pimp. But they came to get saved. Are you seeing where I am? We are going to have to let people come get saved. They're going to look different than us. They're going to have some crazy air. They're going to be able, and they're going to have a different story than you. But if they come into Jesus, you do not have a right to stand between them and Jesus. You don't have a right. No one has a right to stand between you 
and Jesus. Jesus has come to forgive us of all of our sins if we are faithful and just to ask him. And if they are asking for forgiveness of sin, guess what? They are forgiven. They are your brothers and sisters in Christ and get over it. Let's stand to our feet. God is doing something for you today in the house. He's doing something for you for free. Amen. He's saving your soul. He's letting you know to drop that baggage behind you. Don't let, don't let people judge you. Worry about the judgment of Christ. When people say only God can judge me, that's what should worry you. Because he's going to. I am not ashamed of the gospel. And I know many of you aren't ashamed of the gospel either. For it is the power of the salvation for those who believe. I'm sorry if the message was just hard hitting today, but that's just the reality of where we are. I believe we don't have time to keep patting people on the back and say it's going to be okay when it ain't going to be okay. I'm going to tell you this winter, you guys ain't going to be able to make it without Jesus. You're going to be tested and you're going to be tried. But God wins. Father, in the name of Jesus, we open up this altar, this holy altar to your name and to your way. Father, right now we ask, Father, for those who are underneath the sound of, of your presence, Father, the voice of your spirit, that you would call deep under deep, that you would talk to their souls and beckon them to come and give their life to Jesus Christ. Beckon them to come and change their lives. Father, we have no idea the day or the hour that you're coming. But let us be ready for your coming. Yes. Father, I ask you right now, there's some people who are deeply broken and unhurt. And Father, let them know this is their answer. There's some people that may be confused or, 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 or scatterbrained a little bit about what's going on. God, give them clarity and wisdom. Father, right now, you're in this house. By the sound of my voice, if you want to receive Jesus Christ, and you say, Lord, I'm having a heart change, a spiritual heart change, you want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, come to this altar right now and say, brother and sister, I'm coming to receive Jesus Christ, and we're going to pray with you. If you've been out on Jesus, you said, you know what, Lord, I'm coming back like gangbusters, and I'm here to stay. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, have those come up and say, you know what, I'm coming back to the Lord and let us pray. You can kneel at the altar in your own way, but this altar is open for you. Jesus died and this altar is open for you. If you don't want to walk by yourself, come with the person, hey, walk with me as I go get prayer. The altar's open. Please, you come. Lord. Anybody want prayer for acid reflux? You come. Upper part of your arm is sore. We want to pray about that. A deafness or a popping in the ear. Let us pray about that. Any sciatica or any back pain? Let us pray for you. Open prayer partner at the end, you come.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. You can come and the altar and line the altar and stand behind who you want prayer with. We'll pray with you right away. Please come. Please come. Yes, Lord. You come, you come. Have back pain, maybe a popping or, or deafness in one ear, upper arm or acid reflux problems. Come to the middle, we want to pray with you. Open prayer partner right here. moving if you want prayer last call get get to the altar they're gonna pray with you get to the altar right now they're gonna pray with you yes anybody get to the altar right now last call we're gonna get you in everyone's getting prayed for everyone who's at the altars get getting prayed for father last 10 seconds you come on up Open prayer partner down here. If you're coming to the altar, come. Whew. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the souls today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Father, we uh, love you, God, and we just in awe of your presence. Thank you for your healings. Thank you for your salvations and thank you for your touch. Father, I want to thank you, God, for um, dying on the cross for our sins. Father, let the people at the altar be delivered. Let their lives be transformed right now in the name of Jesus Christ.